Stayallday.com. Stay tuned into the show. You learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go-getter energy that moves anyone out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one show, one master class that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is how to reconnect with your gut instincts and gut feelings. I was talking about this actually on an Instagram story a few weeks ago from when I'm recording this, and I saw someone had asked me a question about it when I was talking. I don't remember exactly what I was saying on the story, but someone asked, well, how do you actually do that? Because one of the things that I mentioned was, you got to learn how to reconnect with your instincts and with your gut feelings and not necessarily listen to what so many other people are saying all the time because there are so many people out there sharing information, putting their opinions out there, giving advice out there. Of course, we got all the knowledgepreneurs, all the information, all the entrepreneurs, all the influencers, all the marketers, so many people giving messages to us every day. Some of it useful, some of it not, depending on yourself and your situation, but at the same time, we still got ourselves that we need to listen to. And when we listen so much to what everybody else is saying, whoever everybody else may be, we end up losing touch with listening to ourselves. We forget how to listen to ourselves. So which is something that may have happened to all of us at one point or another, especially us being on the internet, us being active internet users, let alone you no know, publishers, creators, or seekers. So that's what I wanna talk about here today. As a forward thinking, growth focused individual that you are, we can all get stuck in these information gathering loops of a podcast or going to events or you know, coaching or books or mastermind groups without knowing exactly where we are going because we're taking in so much information. It can even be good information, useful information. You're like, that's a great idea. That's a good thing here. But if we're pulling ourselves in 20 different directions because we're taking in all this different information from different people, the information isn't always aligned with each other because different people have different ways of doing things, different ways of going about it, different systems, different tactics, different strategies. How do we know what to follow and what to ignore? Today, I want to help you with all of that. The first step in figuring all of that out, the first step, you got to learn how to reconnect with yourself. And if you've been listening too much to what everybody else is saying, then you may have you know, forgotten you know, what it, what's the voice coming from within. That voice coming through the bones, that sound traveling through the bones that I talked about in my book, Work On Your Game. And I actually did a masterclass on this subject. It was actually back in 2016, masterclass number 59, Through the Bones. If you haven't heard that, then go listen to it right now, everybody who's a game group member. Today, I'm helping you again Reconnecting with yourself, how to reconnect with your instincts and gut feelings is the subject. Point number one, stop listening to so many other voices. And this is the first place you can start. This, this right here will take care of 70% of your issues. If you feel like you are listening to too many different things, you got so many different ideas in your head, you don't know which one to listen to, which one to follow, which one's going to work, which one's not going to work. The first step that will take care of 70%, even 80%, we'll say this, this will 80, 20, the entire problem is you got to stop listening to so many other voices. It's hard to listen to yourself when you're juggling the opinions of 20 other people who never stop talking in your ear, literally in your ear. Those of you who listen by you know, your iPhone head, headphones or AirPods or whatever it is, Beats by Dre, whatever it is you got. You got the opinions of 20 other people in your ear every single day. It's really hard to listen to your own voice because they're talking so loud and so often and they sound so convincing and they keep repeating themselves and they're telling you these things over and over again and it sounds really good and it makes a lot of sense and this person may have a certain level of success that you don't have or at least it appears that they do. And you may start to think, hey, maybe their ideas are better than mine. Maybe their thoughts are better than mine. Maybe listening to their voice is more important than listening to my own voice. And this can really throw you for a loop and confuse you and get you in a place where you don't even know how you got there when you're listening to too many other voices. This is why I told you in Masterclass number 283 to choose your gurus. 
who, who are going to be your experts on certain subjects when it comes to your your mindset or your business or your sport or your hobby or whatever it is you're interested in whatever you're involved in who are going to be the few people that you're going to pay attention to and really dive into their message you're really going to follow what they're saying you're really going to follow their strategies and their systems and their techniques because you can't listen to everybody there are too many people in everybody quote unquote for you to listen to all of them all right it's impossible now, you don't have enough ears to listen to everybody at the same time. You only got one brain to process it all. There's only so much that brain can do, even though the brain is the most powerful tool known to man. Masterclass, again, 283, choose your gurus. Can't listen to everybody, and doing so will only confuse you since they don't all agree on everything anyway. You can listen to 10 different gurus and get 10 different messages about the exact same subject. Because, again, people have different ways of going about things. And it's not even necessarily that anybody is wrong or right. It's just that people are different which is why you had to narrow down. This is the paradox of choice. When we have so many options and so many different ways we could go about something, we actually end up wasting most of our time and energy just trying to figure out which one to take rather than actually doing something. It's not even, we're, we're not even wasting our time doing this stuff. We're wasting our time just trying to figure out right, which one of these 10 people am I gonna listen to? Which one of these 10 books am I gonna read first? Which one of these 100 podcasts am I gonna listen to first? Which one of these... 20 different things I could do today am I actually going to do? We have no focus. We don't have a plan. We don't have a system. We don't have a, a chart that tells us, are we going to do A, B, C, D, E, and F in that order? But individual people usually have that set up for you. But you got to decide, where am I going to start? Who am I going to follow? Who am I going to listen to? It doesn't have to be one person, but it can't be everybody. So it got to be somewhere between one and everybody. All right, less than everybody, but more than one. It could be more than, more than zero and less than everybody. That's what, how I should say that. Stop listening to so many other voices. Who's going to be your expert in, again, your areas of interest? You don't have to pick somebody in every area. If it's something that you don't really care about, then you don't need to worry about that. But the areas that matter to you, who are the people that have the information, or at least that you trust have the information? And sometimes those people will change. There may be a person who can take you from, if you're just getting started, if zero is the starting point and 100 is being perfect at it, there may be a person who can take you from zero to 27. But when you get to 27, that's about as far as you can go with that individual. Now you may pick somebody else up who can take you to 50. Somebody else can get you to 100. But you need to figure out and you need to decide who are the people that I'm going to follow in specific areas so that I can exclude everyone else's messages, I can exclude everyone else's advertising, I can exclude everyone else's books and podcasts and shows or whatever else other people got going on so I can really get focused on the things that I'm going to do based on who I've decided to listen to. You cannot listen to yourself if you can't even figure out who you're going to listen to from the outside world. Point number two, today's topic is how to reconnect with your instincts and gut feelings. Come clean about your internal motivations. Now, this is a good, I would say if 80% is the first one, stop listening to everybody else. And there are so many, every day, everybody becomes a much larger number of people. When you come clean about your internal motivations, meaning you're clear about what you're doing, why you're doing it, where you're going, what are the reasons that you want the things that you want. When you come clear about your internal motivations, then you can really get in touch with who you, you're the real you. Because you is not the things that you think about every day. You is not the pictures that you post on social media. You is not your, just your everyday thoughts. You is not the person that you see. When you look in the mirror and you see your face and you see the clothes you have on or just got out the shower and you don't have any clothes on, that's not you. You is deep inside your soul, the person that you really are. The person that you are when you're not worried about what anybody else thinks of it. And maybe there's nobody else even thinking about it. There's nobody looking at you. There's nobody judging you. There's nobody making an assessment of you. That's the real you. And you had to come clean about your internal motivations because your internal motivations always come from the real you. Your external motivations, those are things that you pick up from the outside world. For example, an external motivation is make more money, get a, a nice house and a fancy car, get more followers on social media. Those are external motivations. I need to get, I need to make more sales in my products and services. I need a better system for advertising. I need to learn how to run Facebook ad campaigns. Those are all external motivations. The way you can identify an external motivation, external motivations are the type of things that we are comfortable telling other people about. So when someone asks you what your goals are and you start listing things like 
things that are surface level, things that you're comfortable with, things that you, the first things that come to mind when somebody asks you what your goals are, those are external motivations. Money, uh, cars, house, uh, win a championship, I want to make a certain amount of um, certain amount of revenue. I want to get me a new pair of sneakers. I'm going to buy my mom a home. I want to retire my parents. I need to get me a new iPad. I got to fix the broken screen on my smartphone. These are all external motivations. These are the things that we are all comfortable talking about and sharing with other people. Now, not everybody shares their even external motivations. Me personally, I wrote about my book, Work On Your Game. To share your external motivations with other people, you lose a little bit of energy just by talking about them. So I don't even share my goals. I don't share my goals with anybody. But there are people who do share goals. And when they do, they're usually sharing their external motivations. Internal motivations, on the other hand, these are the things that are emotional and personal. These are the drivers, the things that we want and the things that we want to do, the things that really move us to action that are internal, personal emotional. These are the kind of things that we sit up thinking about at night and we can't go to sleep. The things that cause us to have the external motivations are the internal motivations. So an internal motivation might be you just want to prove that you are better than your brothers or your sisters or that you could be better than your parents. So because you want to prove that, what you do is go and try to make a lot of money, get a house and a car, get more followers, make more sales, get a better advertising campaign. So because you have this internal motivation, you go and get the external motivators. You understand? The external motivators, there's a reason behind those. So if someone tells you what their external drive is, all you got to do is ask them, why do you want that? And then they'll give you an answer. And if you just keep asking why, usually when you get to about six or seven whys, if the person continues to go along and keeps answering the question, that's when you get to the internal motivation. So how do you find your internal motivator? Or how do you come clean about your internal motivator? Because you already know what your internal motivators are. You just need to come clean about them. When I say come clean, I don't mean you need to go post it on Facebook. What I mean is you need to get clear with yourself what your internal motivations are and why you actually have them. And actually, those are almost the same thing. Your internal motivators are your whys. So when someone says, what's your why? And then people start listening. Sometimes people ask me that question, Dre, what's your why? What's your motivation? What's your reason for doing these things? And usually when people answer that question, when they say what their why is, it's an external motivation. It's not their real why. What is why? I don't even tell people what my goals are. And somebody asks me, what's your why? And I tell people, I don't tell people what my why is because it doesn't matter. What, do, what are you going to do to help me get there? The reason why I tell people don't share your goals, if someone's not going to help you get to the goal, then they don't even know the goal. But if you want to share yours, go ahead. It's your life. It's your goals. You can share whatever you want. But again, if you want to learn it, you want to know the difference between an external and an internal motivator, just listen to what a person says and ask yourself, is that a surface External things is something that anyone will be comfortable sharing or is it personal and emotional? A personal and emotional goal is an internal motivator. Those are the things that most of the time, most of us do not talk about. We cover them up by listing some external thing. So when someone really wants to prove that they're better than everybody else in their family by, they just want to prove they're better than everybody else in their family. That's the thing they really want. So how do I show that? How do I prove that I'm better than everybody else in my family? Okay, let me give me a nice, a nice house, a beautiful car. Let me give me a, a pretty girl or a guy to date. Let me have a great family. Let me get on the cover of a magazine. Let me go make a whole bunch of money. Let me make sure I got all these followers online. And that's how you prove that you're better than everybody else. But the why behind all those things is not that they wanted a car and a house. Nobody wants a car and a house. What people want are the things that, the feelings that they get from having the car or the house. Whether that be safety, taking care of your family, proving that you can do it, uh, proving that you're better than this person who doesn't have the house and the car that you have. Those are the internal motivators, the things that actually drive us, the things that get you out of bed in the morning. Nobody gets out of bed in the morning because they need a car. No, nobody gets out of bed in the morning because they want to make money. Now, you might think that's why you get out of bed in the morning. That's not the real reason. Uh, what are you going to do with money? If I just handed you a million dollars in cash right now, all right, a million dollars in cash in your currency, wherever you live, but I said, all right, you got this million dollars in cash, but you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to spend it. All right, you just allowed to have it. All right, you said you wanted to make money. All right, here's the money. But you can't do anything with it. You can't take it to the bank. You cannot deposit it. You cannot spend it. You cannot buy anything with it. You must keep it here. We're going to put it in a safe. We're going to lock it up. All right, I'll put it in a, a see-through safe. So you can see that it is in there. All right, you can see that the money's there. All right, no, no rats got to it and ate it up. Nothing that is there. It's a clear see-through safe. You can see the money is there. It is yours, but you cannot remove it from this house. 
and you cannot open it and you cannot spend not one dollar of this money. Now you got it. Was that really your motivation? No. Your motivation is what you could do with the money or the fact that everybody knows that you have it because it's going to give you a certain feeling. It's going to give you a certain status, a certain reputation, or at least you think it is. That's the internal motivation. What I'm telling you here in point number two, and today's topic, once again, is how to reconnect with your instincts and gut feelings. You have internal motivations that maybe you are fully aware of, but most likely you're not. Most likely you've been so, you have blinded yourself so much by thinking about your external motivations that you forgot the why behind those external motivations. So look at your goals, which you probably have written down because you have the mental workbook where I took you through writing down your goals and setting out the type of person you need to become to do what you need to do to have what you want to have in life, right? If you don't, then go to workonmygame.com slash workbook and get the mental workbook. I'll ship it to you worldwide. It doesn't matter where you live. Also, we have audio and digital versions if you want it immediately. Internal motivators are the why behind the external. So look at your externals and then ask yourself, why do I want this? I guarantee there's an answer. Why do I want this external outcome? And then you're going to get an answer. Ask again. And you're going to ask about six or seven times. When you get to about six or seven whys, you will have an internal motivator, a personal and emotional reason for doing what you're doing. What I'm telling you here in point number two, to get more in touch with your instincts and gut feelings, you need to be honest with yourself, not with anybody else, but with yourself about what your internal motivations are. And when you're able to do that, then you'll be able to see, all right, there's nothing wrong with having, wanting to have a, a car or a house or money or a girl or a guy or a family or a certain amount of accomplishment or achievement, whatever that looks like. There's nothing wrong with those things. You just need to know why you want them. Because then once you get them, then what? Let's say you had the car, the house, the car, the, the money, the followers, the whatever. Let's say you had it. Now what? If you don't know what your internal motivators are, then you're going to feel empty even though you achieved all your goals. Or at least you thought you did. When you know your internal drivers and you accept them as they are and accept you for having them, you're, much, you're that much closer to connecting with your instincts because your instincts are really where you got those internal motivations from. You didn't have to think for months about your internal motivations. All right, those, they, they just come up. They're there. The external ones you might have to come up with and you might change it. All right, you might have wanted, you wanted a Mercedes, then you wanted a Lamborghini, then you wanted an Aston Martin, then you wanted a Bentley. It can change. But the internal drivers, all right, they're always going to be the drivers. Point number three, today's topic is how to get back in touch with your instincts and gut feelings. Stop overthinking things. Masterclass number 247, I told you how to stop overthinking your performance, all of you who are in performance-based work. And in case you can't read between the lines, everybody's in performance-based work. And Masterclass number 200, I told you about being born confident, but you are taught to hesitate. Your instincts always know the answer to your questions. Always. And even when you initially ignore your instincts, you will always come back to the same conclusion after you have wasted all that time later on. Listening to your instinct is like working a muscle. The more you use the muscle and the more you follow that instinct, the better you get at using the muscle and following your instincts. So you want to get better at following your instincts, you got to follow your instincts. And I just told you in point number one and two, how to get more in touch with them, how to wake your instincts up again. The more you trust your gut, the more you want to trust your gut because your gut's going to tell you the truth. The gut's, your gut's going to tell you something that works for you. It's going to work for you. You're like, oh shit. I trust in my gut and it worked for me. Let me do that again. Then you'll do it again and again and again, and it will keep working for you, but you got to take the first step. As I told you in point number one and two, I told you the first two steps. If you make the wrong choice in following your instinct or following your gut, which usually won't happen, but let's say you follow your gut, but the result of following your gut, following your gut wasn't wrong, but the result of following your gut ends up being wrong. You know what you'll do? You'll see it and you'll fix it, which is what all smart people do. And if you listen to a podcast, you're a smart individual. It's study set. But time cannot be wasted, ladies and gentlemen. You can't waste time. All right, all right, my gut says this, but this book says that, and this guy on YouTube says this, and this guy on my mastermind said that, and this chapter in the book says this, and I read this on a blog, and somebody just sent an email saying that, and somebody DM'd me on Instagram, and they said something else. What do I do? Your gut never tells you a lie. And unlike all of those other people out there, those external individuals who are telling you what they think and what they're doing and what might work for you, you're the only one who has to live with your decisions. You're the one who has to live your life, not them. 
So if you're gonna listen to one person, listen to the one who is has skin in the game when it comes to your life. All right, no, I don't have skin in the game in your life. The book, the author of the book you just read has no skin in the game in your life. The only person who has skin in the game in your life, meaning that they win when you win and they lose when you lose, is you. So you had better get in touch with your instincts, get in touch with your gut feelings, because they're telling you something all the time. It's just you have conditioned yourself to stop listening. So let's recap today's topic, which is how to reconnect with your instincts and gut feelings. I didn't realize that the 1,500 master classes in, I had never talked about this, but I'll talk about it now. So I don't have that problem anymore. Point number one, stop listening to so many other voices. It's hard to listen to yourself when you're juggling the opinions of 20 other people who never stop talking in your ear. Point number two, come clean about your internal motivations. The external motivation are things that we're comfortable sharing with other people, things that sound good, things we would be fine telling the whole world about. Make money, get a house, get a car, get a certain job position, get a certain title, get followers, make more sales, better advertising system. These are things people talk about all the time, all right? These are things when you look at advertisements online, usually people are telling you these things. Right? You want more followers on Instagram? You want to make more money in your business? You want to learn how to create a course that'll sell 10,000 copies in the first day? You want to get yourself a nice car like this one? These are external motivators. These are things we are comfortable talking about and telling the world about. Internal motivators, on the other hand, are emotional and personal. These are the things that we do not talk about with other people. They are the real why behind the external motivations that we have. We want the feelings that come with the car or the reputation or the things that we think come with having a car. When you know your internal drivers and accept them as they are, you are that much closer to connecting with your instincts because that's where they came from. Point number three, stop overthinking things. Your instincts always know the answer to your problems. And even when you initially ignore, ignore your instincts, you will always come back to the same conclusion later on after you wasted time listening to everything other than your instincts. Listening to instinct is like listening to muscle or like working a muscle rather. You can't listen to muscle. The more you use and follow your instinct, the better you get at it. The more you lift weights, the better you get at lifting weights. Your muscles get bigger. Your body looks better. You're like, damn, I want to lift some more weights. Then you go do it again. It's the same thing with listening to your instincts. If you make the wrong choice or you end up with the wrong outcome based on listening to your instinct, your instinct will immediately tell you how to fix it. Then go fix it. All right, you will see that and fix it, but time cannot be wasted, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that time is of the essence here in life, and the more time you spend not listening to your instincts, not following your gut, the further you're going down the wrong path, which is why right here today, I made this masterclass that will preclude you from ever having that problem ever again. So make sure you listen to this masterclass at least five times until you remember every single thing that I said. Work on your game. Dre, all.